I thought I'd show this uh, flex of the passive probe issue um, a different way now which is a little bit more scientific um, going back to the drawing of the uh, planned schematic view of the uh, internals of the probe you've got this situation where you've got a tri swing arm and this is looking down on it to push the probe into uh, electrical brake position on the x-axis takes a certain force to push it into electrical brake connection and the y-axis takes a different force because of the geometry of the pivot points and again to push it in this sort of direction takes a different force that's my theory as to why we're getting this error uh, between um, flex to contact electrical brake position on the x and y axis so what i've done is set up um, a pair a set of precision digital scales on a milling machine and um, put a dial indicator on the stylus tip and I'm going to measure the amount of force per movement of flex so I'll just put the scales on here and they are zeroed I don't know if you can see too well but okay I may have to read it off so okay so what I'm going to do now is bring this stylus tip into contact with the scales and put a certain amount of flex on it. I can tell that by the movement of the dial indicator. That's say 0.1 of a millimeter of flex. And we know that that's in the ballpark of uh, electrical trip position um, from our previous CNC tests. Now the scales are now reading 109 grams. That amount of deflection force is 109 grams. So let's back off here and turn the probe to a different position. This might represent the difference between the X and the Y traverse. Let's say now we're in the Y traverse and we were in the X traverse. Um, let's come into contact. As soon as the needle moves, we're in contact. We're in contact. We're going to put on a force of about 0.1, which is enough to trigger the internals. And we're now getting a load of 148 grams. I don't know if you can see it there. Been on the right angle, but anyway, that's 148 grams, so that's quite a big ratio difference, and that is almost certainly what is causing this problem. I think what's happened is that there's very expensive probe manufacturers like Rhineshore that have probes similar to this but have much more sophisticated internals that have very light actuation forces and allow very long, slender styluses. And the manufacturer of this probe has copied those proportions but it has a stiff mechanical actuation um, and they haven't taken into account this problem that if you're going to have a stiff internal mechanical actuation then you must have a stiff a stiffer stylus um, than, than the more sophisticated probes and so really that, that uh, stylus should be larger in diameter or shorter in length to get around this problem uh, so that it's a balanced design to suit the internal trip method, the mechanical trip method with a spring. Um, at the moment we're getting erratic flex errors because of that out of balance. So this is my plan to get a uh, four millimeter steel ball and some three millimeter carbide rod and um, using my EDM machine Spark road a little hole in the end of the ball, seal ball, about two millimeters diameter. <clears throat> this could actually be a product I could make and um, possibly sell as a, uh, an upgrade, although I doubt whether I could get anywhere near the price of the Chinese. But, and they could then cylindrically grind the end of the carbide rod on the brown and sharp cylindrical grinder with a diamond wheel, or just on the little D-bit grinder might work actually. Um, and um, then I'll have a lot less flex issues. Oh, while I'm here, I'll just show for those of you who are interested. CNC's making me parts, my trusty Path Pilot tool mat. I've um, still got 
Mac 3 Tormac on the uh, older CNC and I'd, I'd rather uh, use Pathpilot now, I've got used to it, it's just brilliant. So you can see the back here behind the spindle I've got the splash guard, which is really great, it keeps the swarf away from um, going down the back where the uh, the accordion ways covers are. There's just hardly anything there. I don't think there's a single piece of swarf there and it's been running making for uh, days making parts. Just machining fresh air now because sometimes I've got a long part. Here we go. A little bit of a diversion. <laughs> 